This is Tommy White, you're watching TTT Boxing. Hello. I'm here with the Hurricane, Dennis Hogan. How are you doing, Dennis? I'm good, thanks, Tommy. Yourself, man? Very well, mate, very well. Um, strange times at the moment. Um, so, usually we do these things face-to-face, -face, but everything's getting a bit more virtual these days. Yeah, yeah. For the times that's in it, but uh, it'll do just as good. It is, it is strange times. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to have a chat with you today, and uh, obviously some big big movements in the boxing world here in Australia in the last week or so. So I want to sort of get your take on that and, um, you know, just get an update obviously on yourself um, as well. So, you know, it's a, a long time since your last fight, like last December against um, Charlo. Um, so how's the break yeah. been? Have you been enjoying it? Are you itching to get back in there? What's, uh, what's the latest? Yeah, look, um, because, you know, once 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 that happened, I just wanted to get back in as soon as I could. But um, this time is actually, you know, with the COVID, it's given me a lot of time to reflect on a lot of things. And, um, you know, we trained so I trained so hard for the last one and all the traveling and everything. I didn't really realize how tired my body actually still was. From from all of year 2019, you know, you got the Mungia fight and you had the disappointment and a bit of an emotional roller coaster and then the Charlo stuff and all of that. But um, but again, my mindset is always, you know, get back to where I need to be and what's the next fight to get to the World Championship. But I've had a time, I've had time now to sit back and really start enjoying my boxing again. Um, reminds me a little bit of the story of, um, you know, how Tyson Fury started back. He just set a goal to enjoy his boxing, you know, with, with, with his coach at that point and, um, and start to uh, lose a bit of weight and stuff. And then he started to really enjoy it again. And from there he kicked on. Well, that's how it feels like for me. I started to really enjoy my boxing again. And um, I got really fit in the meanwhile doing it. And I've had some great spars. And um, I've had time to reflect mentally on, on last year and really zone in on the things that I could do better. And um, I'm very excited with, with, with a lot of stuff that I've come up with. So right now I am absolutely buzzing and boxing out of my skin. And um, we're not far off uh, locking something in that's going to be that's going to be huge for my career. So. And uh, and you've changed trainers in that time as well, haven't you? So you're working with um, Wayne McCulloch, but he's over he's over in the states, isn't he? So how how's that working for you at the moment? Are you just sort of ticking over. Well, well, well. So how that's been working is, um, look, I've been I've been in contact with Wayne very regularly, and um, and um, you know Stephen Edwards over here, uh, my my cuts man, um, you know, and also Jeff's cuts man. Um, he's I've asked him to oversee my my training here, so he's an assistant coach now, and um, he's been doing a a wonderful job in terms of what we're trying to achieve and looking at it and coming back and talking about it and my sparring that I've been doing a lot of, I've, I've been sparring quite regularly now for a while and um, well, it's going up and up and so a lot of things we want to work on are actually coming to fruition very well and I'd be speaking to um, to Wayne as well and he'd, be, he'd have certain little things that he wanted me to work on and they've they've come to fruition as well which is which I believe is game changing stuff you know it has, for a fighter like myself it's not about changing my style that's got me so far it's about making tweaks and um, yeah. A lot of things that I didn't really like, that I sort of felt like I was forced to do certain elements against big fighters where I felt like I had to go back quite a lot, which was good for counterpunching and stuff. But a lot of techniques we've learned now, I can I can stop that from happening. and I don't have to go back as much anymore. And I'm more balanced with my punches while executing just the smallest of tweaks. So I can talk about a lot of this stuff here, but... Um, but but the overall picture of it is I'm I'm really enjoying it again, um, I'm doing the amount of work that I that I that I have to do to stay fit. Because every now and again I'd say you know, uh, I like to be able to always know that I can jump in and do twelve rounds at a whim. That's the that's the fitness I like to keep. Yeah. And every now and again I jump on a bag and I'll do. I, I can, sometimes I've said I'm going to do twelve and I do fifteen all out, and you know and I and I measure my heart monitor and that that's the, that's the fitness I keep. On on a on a just all all year round basis, pretty much. So it's not about uh, training hard all the time. It's about training smarter, and, and I know that now, especially at my age. Um, I still feel very good and uh, looking to execute all of that now. All right, and then obviously at the moment people are getting fights at short notice, and we saw 
um, you know, with the Maloney's, they kept fit and then they got those opportunities over in the States. Is that part of the mindset as well, that if something comes up, you want to be ready? Yeah, well, look, we've been working on something coming up. Um, you know, after the last fight, you know, we, we it was a two-fight deal with Charlo. Um, we had previously had a three-fight deal, but that was scrapped for the two-fight deal with Charlo. And uh, the, obviously the first one being Charlo, the second one being, you know, if I was unsuccessful, um, you know, obviously you win at the World Title Defence, but if you're unsuccessful, then it means then that you get a you get a, a one more fight at super welterweight, and then you get on from one of the one of the champions at super welterweight because PBC have three out of four belts, yeah. and possibly five. You know, if Costano comes home against them um, against Texera, so uh, so we took that, and now um, I was I'm ready to execute that. And one of the things that 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 slowed us up on that was. Um, I decided for a while that I would have, would have liked to have a tune-up fight, and PBC were were okay with that. But um, just with no crowds, you know, and um, there just be main events uh, uh, on those cards, then it looked like you know we were going to get something. But in the meanwhile, throughout COVID, through all the sparring and everything, I'm like, do you know what? I am ready to go. I don't need a tune-up fight now. I think that would just start putting me backwards. Let's get back on for someone now. So we've got some names, and. Um, we had three names that have been thrown in and uh, we're looking to zone in on that now and that would happen, uh, we're looking at November now. So. And that'll be back in the States on the PBC card? Oh yeah, 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 yeah 100%. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully we have crowds by then or that's not looking, we don't know how likely that's going to be I guess. But Yeah, it, it's tough to know isn't it? Um, it's tough to know but, <clears throat> but, but the, the main thing for me obviously is that I'm getting that fight that I need and then win that <clears throat> And I'm back on for one of the champions again. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just delighted with that. And again, Tommy, you know, you've heard me speak for a long time. Uh, I said, I'll get those belts and I will get them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you're determined. And like I said, they've got a lot of those belts. I saw the, well, Lara Vendetti was on the other day as well, wasn't it, over the weekend. Um, and that was without crowds. So they're, they, you know, they are getting these belts fought for, um, you know, even without the crowds there. So there is... Yeah, we're starting to see some momentum again, which is obviously good news for everyone. Um, yeah. And I, so over in um, over in Australia, um, yeah, we had a big fight last week, probably the biggest fight of the year, almost by default because there's been almost nothing else. But uh, it was a it was a big one. Um, you know, a lot of people involved pretty well. Um, so what were your, uh, I guess, initial takeaways from you know, Zoo's win and 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 Jeff's loss? Um, it was just one of those things where um, after the first round, like I know Jeff, I, I've sparred him quite a lot for a lot of years and um, we, we've all seen Jeff. We know when he's on and we know when he's not. And um, after the first round um, and the start of the second, because I've seen Jeff having a bad first round but coming back to dominate fights, you know, on his rise towards beating Manny Pacquiao. And then, you know, and then when the second round came and I didn't see much change in what he was doing and, and what he was looking like. I just slumped in my chair and just knew it was going to be another bad night for Jeff. I think, you know, it, and it, you know, it's just, it, it's so bizarre because um, he can be so on and then, you know, and, and then looking at that, it just looked like it was just so off. Um, so it really is, you know, uh, you know, I gotten so pumped up for the fight. I know, I know that Jeff Horn, that, that you know that has emerged um, to do what he's done could have gone into that fight and, and could have just ripped it out of it but uh, it wasn't the beat the other night and um, it leaves a lot of, even yeah like you know I've 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 no um, you know people say who did you want to win and I'd say look I, I'm obviously I, you know I, I supported Jeff for a lot of years I went to Vegas to see him to see him fight Crawford I, I travelled around and, I, and I've supported Jeff um, so I wanted to see Jeff win. It probably was more beneficial for me to see Tim Zhu win in terms of us all being in the same division. Mm. But uh, it is it is hard to see Jeff um, and, and have a performance like that when I know there's so much more in him. So Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, Glenn Rushton's come under a lot of criticism for his preparation for how he was during the fight. You've obviously worked with Glenn as well. Um, have you... Have you seen sort of his responses to that? And yeah, you know, I think it was Adam Copeland that made the decision to throw the towel in the end, which I think was probably the, the right one. Although the quality in the corner agreed eventually. Um, but do you think it could have come in a bit earlier? 
Well, I, I'm I'm actually, um, and I'm not just saying this to be political. I didn't watch it back yet. Um, I actually haven't had the time. I've been busy with, with what we're trying to do and trying to lock in with our fight. But I didn't watch it back yet. Uh, I definitely do feel um, um, now, though, that I, I couldn't see it going the other way. I know that Glenn said that they could land that shot, and that's that's for, for the team to decide. Um, but I, I didn't see it going the other way at that point. I'd seen Jeff being dropped a few times, and um, it just didn't feel to me, sitting in the chair, my own personal experience, that he was going to be able to do anything there. So, um, yeah, so heartbreak. Because you were there, you were there weren't you? I, Man, I was there, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah, I was there. And yeah. I let so myself get carried away. You know? and yeah, I, I think it's like, different when you're watching it at home. With the, yeah, it's, it's a bit more clinical when you're watching it on TV than it is when you're ringside yeah. sort of watching it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think, you say, when you get carried away, you see them do things before. Um, I, yeah, I think you can understand it from both sides. But, um, yeah, I think probably some of the criticism is fair. Uh, but um, but, but sorry, I'm Karen. just saying, like, one... one when I seen him look uh, like tired in the second round as well, I was it, it was a mystery to me because um, because I know you know a lot of strategies. That I've, we've got the same strength coach, you know, and um, Stephen Edwards helping me out is also a, a massive part of, of of his, and his his prep was good. So it it's a mystery as to how he he, he gassed out. And my own look on this is, you know, I heard his voice was gone three weeks. Mm. Out, you know, I, I, I didn't, I've no idea what's gone on there, um, and I, I don't think that there's any real explanation for it. But the, when I seen him gas in the second round, from the man that that in 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 in, in the heat, you know, beat Manny Pacquiao, it just doesn't really make sense to me. So I think there's a massive mystery around it, and I'd love to find out what it is. But but as of now, I, I don't think anyone knows. Yeah, I'm sure things will leak out over the next months and years and decades. Um, so, um, you know, Tim Zoo obviously has emerged as everyone's talking about Tim at the moment. And I've seen sort of posts from yourself and from um, your promoter, Paul uh, Keegan, um, just sort of saying, you know, don't forget there's another super welterweight in Australia. Do you, do you feel that you've been a little disrespected by the fact you haven't been mentioned in these conversations? Or is that just a sort of playful jab? Yeah, look, uh, well, it's always playful by me anyway, because I know what I'm worth and I know what I'm able to do. And um, and I know I can beat Tim. I, I, I really do. Um, I, I I think that it's going to be... Um, sorry, we lost camera. That's right. I, 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 I think that it's going to be... Um, look, here's the thing, right? You've got to fight that magnitude and then you've got people saying that this is the number one. And you even had people saying the winner of this was going to fight uh, Texera. When I'm sitting there going, well, I know Texera is a mandatory challenger in Castano. I know the larger picture of everything that goes on, and this this was all brilliant for promotion and selling it. It was the two best number ones and all of that. So you know, let, let it be what it is. I'm all good. I know when the time comes. I know I'm closer to a world championship than either of them would have been, because I, I've got I've got an elimination bout. I'll be an unofficial one, but I win that a month for the champion. So I'll be left out of it because I know, and I've said it online too, when it's when it's been called of me, I know that I'm not being brought up for a reason, right? Tim is after getting over, um, you know, Jeff, and he can enjoy his victory and enjoy his win. But when but when crunch comes to it, you know, I'll be left out of the conversation because another big fight in me would be a different story, um, and everyone will know that. Um, when, when, when push comes to shove or when it comes to the crunch, it, it will be me that I have to get past because I'll have the belt at that point anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm next in line. Uh, it's not Tim next in line. So Yeah. But I mean, overall, I guess it's, for have a fight that big, everyone was talking about it. It's good for everyone, isn't it, in the sport when you have an event like that that goes, it went pretty well, start to finish. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And look, and, and I will say, hats off to Tim because he showed up on the night and he did what he had to do. Um, look, I, I've always been. Um, I, I want, I want Tim to get up and 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 do well in his career, I, as I wish that for every fighter, and um, and his team, and and for Australia, um, the country I, I now call home. I want them all to do well. I just, as a puglist of of, of thirty years myself, I just know I'd beat him. And um, I, they're not going to look for that, and I'm not going to look for um, um, uh, unless I had to. But I don't see that. Uh, that's not the necessity right now for me. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. 
Um, so you mentioned that you're very close to announcing something. Um, I mean, how, how close are we to knowing when your next fight and who it's going to be? Yeah, look, I, I reckon two weeks off. Um, and, and we do have to kind of lock in on it soon anyway, because for me to get to America, I got um, I just got to get on the visa stuff. So it's one of those things that we have to get it done ASAP if it's got to be before Christmas. So if it is to be in November, we gotta be, we'll have to get this locked in very, very fast. And would your plan to be to go out to the States as soon as you could? Yeah, I mean, look, I will. I'll be looking to go. I'll be looking to try and be leaving here within the next two weeks and, and get as much time there as possible. Um, I'll admit as heartbreaking as it is to leave my kids and and and, uh, and my family, but um, but it's what needs to be done, and, and that's what we'll do. So. Excellent. All right. Well, look forward to hearing that news. Um, I'll uh, let you get on with your day. Maybe once that's announced, we'll get you back on um, to have a chat a bit more in depth about that. Uh, but yeah, appreciate your time uh, today, Dennis. And um, yeah, look forward to uh, catching up again soon. Hopefully at some point face to face. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Tommy. Great chatting to you, mate. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Speak to you soon, mate. Bye. All right. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.